Okay, so I come next, we'll go on to the Moto Protection. Moto Protection. So we have the typical types of motor faults. You can experience short circuit, uh, overload, stall or jam rotor, single phasing, current unbalance, earth fault, over temperature, over voltage and under voltage, and as well as under current. Eh? So under current is uh, not really the protection for the motor, lah, but mainly for the for the load. Nah, for example, if there's an impeller, is using driving a compressor or pump. If the impeller is lost or one of the impeller is broken, so it will show it's under loaded lah, under current. Eh? So for reasons for motor failures, it's normally excess current. Eh? Excess current overload or under voltage. Eh? So excess current will uh, will increase. Uh, of course, the higher current, then higher losses I squared R, so more heating to the motor, so this will uh, damage the insulation of the motor and uh, reduce the lifetime of the motor. Lah. Okay, so it can also be due to poor ventilation, again related to heating, and uh, also high ambient temperature. Lah. If you are operating this at a very high amb ambient temperature environment, 40 degrees or 40 plus degrees Celsius. Okay, so the rule of thumb is for every 10 degrees Celsius temperature rise, the life of the insulation is reduced by 50%. Okay, uh, and last but not least is also due to water ingress. So this one normally happen within the motor terminal box or within the motor itself, lah. Water ingress, eh? uh, Okay. So as the mechanical load increases, motor current will increase, and with terminal as terminal voltage reduce, motor current will also increase. Lah. This is a, as, mo as the motor is a constant kilowatt or constant power device lah, during running. Eh. So during motor starting, motor is constant impedance device. Lah. Protection requirement. So we have short circuit protection which will utilize fuse, MCCB or high set over current or high set of fault. And also for overload is contactor and overload release. Lah. So this is the typical uh, controls and protection of the motor. So let's see one by one. Eh. Type 1 is the most conventional one. We use a, a bimetal thermal overload, uh, which will be used to control on uh, to stop or trip the contactor. Lah. And the uh, short circuit protection is by a MCP or motor control protection, which is in this case is a MCCB with instantaneous protection. For type 2 is uh, a little bit modern. The, the the motor is using a CT feeding to a motor protection relay. It will still trip or open the main contactor. Lah. And that we are using still the MCP lah, motor control protector. Lah. And the type number 3 is the type where we use isolator plus fuse con uh, combination and with a conventional overload relay. Uh. Type 4 is the same as type 3 but using a more modern uh, CT type CT with motor protection relay. While for type 5, this is uh, uh, using a circuit breaker. For example, in the high voltage, this uh, use vacuum circuit breaker together with the motor protection relay. Lah. So this one, type 4, is uh, for the minimum voltage, no, normally we call it this uh, combination of contactor plus the fuse as a vacuum contactor unit. Lah. Okay. So thermal overload protection is to protect motor against the mechanical overloading and as well as stalled condition. Lah. Uh, this stall condition can happen during the starting or during the course of the running of the motor. So it has two characteristics. One is the hot curve, another is the cold curve. It fa the hot curve is faster protection when motor is hot. It means it, it trips faster lah, as compared to the cold curve. Where else the overload relay is too slow for the short circuit protection. 
Uh, so overload relay is not used for short circuit protection lah. That's what it's trying to uh, convey. Yeah. And for this overload relay, if you're using a bimetal, it has a thermal memory or capacity. For the modern relays, you have to input correctly the cooling constant and the heating constant in the relay to emulate the thermal memory. Lah. So relay thermal capacity versus motor temperature, let's see. Eh? So after long stop, it's zero and cold. So relay thermal capacity, it will trip once it reaches 100% of its thermal capacity. Lah. So motor temperature is very high. It depends on the uh, winding temperature class, maybe class B or class F. Uh, so it can go up to 155 degrees or 180 degrees or 120 degrees. So it depends. Lah. Uh, so starting increase the thermal capacity, capacity increases rapidly because of high starting current, even though for short duration. But for the motor temperature, it, is, uh, it only starts to increase, lah, but not as fast. Eh? So normal operation increases, uh, the thermal capacity increases according to the load current and reaches steady state value below 100% when the motor temperature stabilizes. So when you are running at full load current, the thermal capacity should never ever reach 100%. So it's either you have wrought, uh, you have set this, you have put the setting wrongly, for the cooling and the heating constant or your motor is having a problem lah, like overloading and actual overloading eh? okay so under normal condition it should never reach the 100% TC or thermal capacity for the motor temperature under normal comp uh, operation it increases to a steady state lah. so when there is a balance between heat loss and the heat generated for short time overload increases Thermal capacity will increase during the overload and decreases after that. And for motor temperature, it will also increase while the overload persists and decrease after that. Lah. So this is a comparison eh, between thermal capacity and motor temperature. For long time overload after running, it increases from its pre-overload steady state value and eventually it will reach 100% thermal capacity. And tripping time will depend on the pre-overload condition, lah, whether it was running 50% or 80% load before the overload condition happen. Eh? So for the motor temperature it will increase and must trip before reaching its temperature limit. Eh? Uh, this one will mostly depend on the temperature class of the winding. While overload imme immediately after cold start, longer time to trip because TC starts from zero cold trip. While the relay operation must be faster than the cold withstand time. Eh? Uh, and restart when warm increases before reaching zero and increases before reaching ambient temperature for motor temperature. While after you shut down, your thermal capacity will decrease, decrease and eventually reaches zero. Cooling time is longer than the heating time typically. Yeah. And decreases and eventually reaches ambient temperature. Yeah. So this is, so to, to summarize basically the overload protection depend, uh, which is based on relay thermal capacity is much more sensitive as compared to the winding temperature alone. Lah. Okay. Okay, this is the behavior of the temp winding temperature, motor temperature with load. So during starting, high current, six times to eight times. So it, it only starts to increase the temperature. At full load, it will increase to a certain value, but it will stabilize. At full load, once it's overloaded, it will keep on, on increasing. If the overloaded condition is not uh, removed, it will continue to increase until the hot trip temperature setting. Ah. But if, it is, if the overload is removed before it reaches that temperature, it will start to cool down and go back to the uh, stable, the normal temperature uh, of the motor lah, under normal load. And finally, once you stop, there will be some time before the motor finally cools down to the normal ambient temperature. So this cool, cooling time is normally much slower as compared to the uh, to the uh, heating time lah of the motor. Eh. So this is an example of the thermal relay time current curve. As you can see here, this is the bimetal overload relay. This is a very old relay. So there's a bimetal part here. Okay, then this uh, this is uh, this is the heater. This is actually a heater. 
this uh, four squares here, this is heater, then red, yellow and blue will be coming directly from the CT. Lah. So the CT will uh, trigger, will heat up this uh, heater through the I squared R losses and will uh, heat up the bimetal. Lah. So this bimetal, each of this bimetal for each phase uh, will trigger lah, the uh, unbalanced strip contact or the thermal strip contact of the of the relay lah. Okay. So as you can see here, there's a cold curve and the hot curve. So normally during starting, we refer the starting and the tripping time to the cold curve. Once the motor has run and stabilized its temperature, it will trip uh, depend based on the hot curve, uh, temperature time current curve lah. Single phasing protection. So it happens due to unbalanced voltages and fuse blown on one phase lah. So these are the typical cases. Eh? So if you know 1% unbalanced voltage can produce to about 6% unbalanced current eh? uh, or the negative sequence current. Eh? So if if the motor is going to be start started with a single phasing single phasing condition, it can never start because it doesn't have enough torque to turn the motor. But if the motor was running and suddenly it lost one of its face, it will continue to run, but it will have a high, very high vibration lah, and it will be very inefficient lah, running under single phasing condition. So how can we detect this? Is that we use a negative sequence or unbalanced current protection. Lah. So this is a single phasing motor condition. Alright. So under single phasing motor condition, so this face is... Uh, this red phase is blown, so you'll have a single phasing condition which is about 1.732 times of the rated current. So this is the current uh, of the negative sequence current. Uh. This is not sorry. This is not negative sequence. This is the phase current. Uh. So when you measure, it will come up with a negative sequence current, uh, and this one can be used as a measurement for tripping the motor based on negative sequence current. For a fault, there's two types of uh, detecting the fault. First, we have the residual connection. When the second type is the core balance CT or the zero sequence current transformer, ZCT. For the residual connection, it's normally three phases uh, summation, by summation. Uh. So, may operate during starting due to CT saturation. So, if you're using uh, a fault with a uh, Summation CT or residual connection type CT for the effort detection. The effort may nuisancely operate due to CT saturation. So what you can do is that you can add a stabilizing resistor or you can introduce a time delay or higher system or you can just use a relay that inhibit the effort during starting. For example, you as long as it was starting, inhibit the effort. For example, as long as the current is more than two times the full current, inhibit the effort. So, this one depends on the type of relay that you are using. Lah. The easiest is just to add a stabilizing resistor. Lah. So, basically when you add the stabilizing resistor, you are actually increasing the sens sensitivity of the effort relay. Lah. Okay, the second type is covalent CT or ZCT. Lah. Okay, over temperature protection. Typically, it's used in the large motors. For LV motors, we rarely use this over temperature protection. So it can measure the temperature of the winding and the bearing uh, by uh, resistant temperature detector, RTD, or using the thermistors, PT100, embedded within the winding or at the bearing, lah, drive end and the non-driving end, lah, DE and DE. Okay, that's all. So just uh, one final note. This is on the coordination of motor protection. So in here you can see there's a few graphs here. So we'll just go one by one. Eh? So we have here the LV effort protection. Here this curve here is the motor and the normal running characteristic curve. And this is the overlap, overlap uh, characteristic or the IDMT. This is the fuse or can be replaced with the MC, 
uh, circuit breaker lah MCCB or VCB or similar lah. So for LV and MV, uh, we can use the combination type fuse plus contactor lah. For the MV, is the same but they call it as the vacuum contactor unit. For LV, we can also use the MCCB plus contactor uh, with a fault protection. While for large MV, which uh, motor current is more than, for example, more than 400 amps or almost 400 amps, you need to use a circuit breaker lah, together with overload and also high set protection. Lah. So let's see here. You can, if you can, please note here. One is the overload curve. Second is the fuse. So the fuse and the overload curve, overload curve must cross. Must cross, must cross, eh? must cross over or occur be before the short circuit limit rating of the contactor or the vacuum contactor unit. For example, lah. Eh? So let's see. This is a hundred m, hundred twenty m motor. So I'm guessing uh, the vacuum con the contactor is using maybe 200 amps or 300 amps. Let's say the short circuit rating of the contactor is up to 10 times of the rated current. So in this case, 10 times 200 amps is around 2 kA or 2000 m. So this is 1000 m, 2000 m. Lah. So we cannot allow the contactor to break for faults more than 2000 m. So that's why we need to make sure that the fuse breaks in before reaching 2000 m. So in this case, uh, close to 1000. Eh. So if there's any fault above 1000 m and above, so the overload is here, but the fuse uh, is below the overload curve and the fuse will be blown first instead of the contactor being open. If not, the contactor life will be reduced. Lah. Because it's breaking the current beyond it, the capacity of its short circuit rating. So this is one particular. If you are using this for M, uh, with MCCB, you must make sure that the high set uh, incident MCCB comes to this point. Uh, must come in before the contactor maximum uh, short circuit rating. Uh. Okay. So if you think this material is good, please share this material to your electrical friends. Uh, and do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Clarkso VE, and then my Facebook page. Please uh, like my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Clarkso VE. And if you have any other questions, please throw, uh, throw them in the comments below or you can email me directly lah at Clarkso at gmail.com. Thank you. Huh?